a KQED television production. Another umami bomb. <laughs> umami bomb. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Total Wine and More offers over 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits with specialists on hand to provide advice on any item. Now open in Mountain View, Pleasant Hill, and Fremont. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Integrated Resources Group has a vast selection of epic porcelain slabs and pentel quartz surfaces for today's modern designs. That's right. That's right. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, police officer Jeanette Cazares patrols the streets for arresting eateries to share with her monthly dining group, where food, wine, and laughter are all that matters. No donuts for this cop. Management consultant David Hopkins hails from the other side of the pond. He likes to fly small planes in his spare time, a hobby with an altruistic benefit when he's deployed on missions for the nonprofit Angel Flight West. But first, Deputy Attorney General Shar Saxon protects and serves her community and plays in two cover bands. When she isn't loring or rocking out, she seeks local places to eat. Tucked away in the tenderloin, her go-to for comfort fare is Rusty's Southern. Rusty Southern is me really sharing who I am and my family and my upbringing in the South with folks here in San Francisco. I'm Rusty Olson. I own Rusty Southern here in the Tenderloin in San Francisco. In rural North Carolina, where my mother grew up and is essentially farmland, one big thing that would happen at a lot of the local churches would be annual fundraisers. And the farmers that were members of the congregation would each donate a hog. And the men of the church would stay up all night long smoking the pigs, the next day pulling it off the bone, chopping it, tossing it with a nice vinegar-based sauce. It's not pulled pork, it's chopped pork. And any real person from the Carolinas will tell you that that's the way it's supposed to be done. It's gotta be chopped. That really is kind of the cornerstone of Southern cooking, the thought and the care. You have to have passion and time to put into it. You know, when, when my guests ask about how we make our fried chicken, I say, here's the recipe. Now, when are you gonna make this? Cause you need at least three days to get started on it. What I really like to do is you know, have a conversation with somebody, give them something new that they've never had, whether it's boiled peanuts or a true glass of sweet tea or a great craft beer. You'll, you'll never see me happier than when I'm interacting with our guests here. All right, Shar, are, are you a fan of Southern fare? Is this your go-to type of cuisine? This is absolutely my go-to cuisine. Rusty's has the quintessential comfort food. Their specialty is fried chicken and biscuits. The biscuits are buttermilk biscuits. They're a little bit crispy on the outside. They're cooked perfectly and they're tender and flaky. We got the buttermilk fried chicken. Mm -hmm. Absolutely delicious and it is piping hot, gleaming. Fried chicken needs to be gleaming and piping hot. Right. The crust was absolutely crunchy, tasty. It had sea salt sprinkled on top. It's actually in a sweet tea brine. So it is sweet, it is salty, it is the perfect blend when you bite into it. It also came with collard greens, which were kind of lemony, and they had Carolina Hop and John, which is a rice and bean mixture, right. which was absolutely delicious. Those three things just 
blended together. Well, Rusty very is well. from the Carolinas. Oh, absolutely. So, <laughs> you know, there is some authenticity there. I must confess that I have never eaten southern food before. So this was an experiment all around. But I did have the fry basket to start, which mm -hmm. was amazing. It was the uh, mixed shrimp and vegetables. The shrimp were just fantastic. I really like them. Well coated, nicely done. There's a lovely dipping sauce on the table. Beautiful dish. We also got the burger, which they only make 12 of That's every right. day. That's right. They insist that, that it's hysterical. fresh ground. Oh, yeah. So you, if you're one of the lucky 12, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, it's a traditional burger, but my goodness, it was juicy. The traditional toppings, the bun was beautiful. It just drips in your hand, you know? As a fan of burgers, that's how they should be. Messy and delicious to eat. I really that's enjoyed right. it. The meat seemed caramelized, sweet on the outside, and it was a little bit crispy. And then you bite in, and it's just absolutely this tender, beautiful red meat. And it was just a perfect burger. The French fries, I had to ask, they were uh, dusted with Cajun seasonings, but they had a little bit of white truffle oil, and I could just barely taste the hint of it. Um, but also the mac and cheese came in this beautiful cast iron skillet. It had bacon pieces in it, but it also had this cheese on top that was just delicious, and we absolutely enjoyed it. I don't think I've ever been more full than leaving Rusty's. And, you know, in terms of the pork barbecue, we're well, talking a particular barbecue. Very interesting to say because in the very best sense of the term, I'd never had barbecue quite like it. Mm -hmm. It's chopped up small. It, it could be a little dry, mm -hmm. but there's sauce on the table. You sprinkle your sauce on it. I had a vinegar-based sauce, which made it very tart right. and just delicious. The quality of the pork was outstanding. It just tasted delicious with that sauce. I'm going Wonderful. back for that, David. I'm going back for that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I saw her mouth watering. Yeah. She was <laughs> <laughs> and, and they also have the mustard sauce. Mm -hmm. And these are just in yeah. little shakers, mm -hmm. so you just put on a little bit, and yes. it's really flavorful, yes. and it adds so much to the pork. And you can get the pork as an entree, or you can get it as a sandwich on a brioche. Yes. I have to just say one thing about the chicken fried steak and the fried chicken. You know how sometimes when you get fried chicken, you take a bite and the crust just flies across right. the room? This, the crust is so substantial, it stays on it, it all stays together somehow, and you get a little bite of crust and you get a little bite of chicken. Mm -hmm. And the other special treat that they have is the country board. Mm -hmm. You get incredible deviled eggs, you get pickled okra, bread and butter pickles, you get radishes, you get pickled green tomatoes, pimento cheese and crackers, pralines, and you have pork cracklings. Mm. They're crispy, they're a little bit salty, and then you have a little wedge of some kind of brie cheese, it's not brie exactly, but it's from a Marin Creamery, mm -hmm. and two kinds of cured meats. You know, you order this board thinking, well, it's an appetizer. No, mm -hmm. you're, you're full when you have finished it. And when you walk into Rusty Southern, you get a little something special, don't you? You do. Everybody gets a little paper dish of boiled peanuts. They're hot boiled peanuts, and they're salty, and they're soft, so it's not like what you get at the ballpark. It's the kind of hot, salty thing you just can't stop eating. And they baked a peach cobbler, which was to die for. Just served beautifully, and it tasted absolutely delicious. And they also have a buttermilk pie, which I had never heard of. It's got a little bit of a lemony flavor, and it's not, it's something between a cake and a custard. Well, it's because you're not pronouncing it right. It's buttermilk pie. Pie, yes, pie. it is pie. It's pie, yes. <laughs> there was just something about the karma of that restaurant which made you feel really welcome when you walk in. And in my imagination, I think I've built Rusty up to be at least twice the size he really is. <laughs> but, you know, he has the fully shaved head, this right. huge great beard, a wonderful smile on his face. His wife was our server. Right. And the two of them together, you just feel you want to support a young couple trying to make a go of a business, serving great food. You just felt good about it, you know, which is great. This is your spot. Give us a quick summary. Rusty's has scrumptious comfort food and southern hospitality and warmth in the heart of the tenderloin. All right, and David? Just beautiful. Order four courses, fries, beer, fry basket, and some chicken, you know? Well, yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> All right, Jeanette? I would say for huge portions of modern southern food, go to Rusty's. All right, if you would like to try Rusty's Southern, it's located on Ellis Street at Polk in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-638-6974. It's open for brunch and lunch, Thursday through Sunday, dinner Tuesday through Saturday. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30.
It may seem a world away, but you can sit inside in the garden or around the fire pit at Jeanette's Pick, a beer drinker's paradise with 30 taps and a Berkeley twist, kombucha on tap. You can't miss the neon sign for Jupiter. Jupiter is a great place for people to gather and enjoy themselves and socialize. It's the party atmosphere that keeps it really fun to work here. I'm Jessica Tung and I'm the general manager of Jupiter in Berkeley. Jupiter offers a wide selection of craft beers. We have 12 house taps and 22 rotating guest taps. We offer everything from sours to barrel aged items and just really unique styles of beer. We have a kind of fun birthday tradition here. Um, instead of offering desserts, we offer beer chugs. I'm Matt Berger, I'm the executive chef at Jupiter. So our Jupiter oven downstairs is about 25 years old. It's been with us since the very beginning. And like any old cast iron pan or good grill, it takes on that extra smoking flavor of the history you know, behind it. We use a honey wheat crust in here. Um, the honey, I think, adds a flavor. It gets a much better caramelization because of the added sugar. You know, we've been making the same dough by using the same starter, and they re-do you know, it. So it's been going for 20-plus you know, years now. That always adds more flavor. Pizza is kind of a blank canvas in a way that you can do a lot of different flavors. Stuff that might have been an entree at another place could kind of be a pizza here. It's fun to have people wondering about what's in it, and then that gets them thinking, and then you know, it gets it going. And they're like, oh, I got to go back and try that crust. That was really good. Then they stay, and they come back, and they come back, and then they keep going for 25 years. <laughs> All right, Jeanette, I know you like wine, but I this is, we're wine. talking beer here at Jupiter, aren't we? We are. Mm -hmm. Beers and ciders. Right. And I go for their ciders, definitely. Uh, pomegranate, mango, cherry, there's always a really great assortment of those mm -hmm. as well. I went to college at UC Berkeley, mm -hmm. and that is the UC Berkeley Digs. Full of college students, but also has a really great mix of all kinds of Berkeley mm -hmm. people. I think everybody can really gather around good pizza and beer. It's right across the street from BART, mm -hmm. so it's easy to get to. It's a great place to meet up. So you walk in downstairs, and that's our dining room. There's a bar along the side, and it's a beautiful room. It's old and wooden. It kind of looks like an old craftsman. There's, there's the pressed tin on the walls, and it looks really old-timey and just beautiful. And then you go upstairs, and there's a whole other dining room. We had the best table. It was on the edge right at the window that overlooked the garden. And so we could hear the band and see the beautiful garden. Of course, you can sit outside in the garden, but you have to hover for a table. They won't put you down. Uh, for an outside table, you just have to stand out there and cross your fingers. The building where it's situated, there's not too much wind, which is beautiful if you're sitting outdoors. There are heat lamps, but if you can get a seat around the fire pit, I definitely recommend that as your first seating option. Very beautiful if you're on a date because fire lighting <laughs> makes you look right. glowy. Everyone look lovely. This is a very historic place too. Exactly, it is. yes. Building and I love rich that. history. I and, learned that yeah. from my friend when we went there. And you know, the thing that I found was so hilarious about that place. I mean, it's, it's just a tremendous place, but it's quintessentially Berkeley, because how often do you go to a brew pub and you find that they describe the pork as heritage pork? And the <laughs> chicken, Petaluma chicken and wings. Pataluma chicken wings. <laughs> yes. We noticed that, and then, of course, the, the kombucha on tap. So we, uh, we went in there, just a, a fun place to go. The server was great. He came right up. Uh, discussed all the beers knowledgeably. We had beer and cheese fondue to start, and then we had the spinach and artichoke dip, which was uh, creamy and warm, and you could really taste the artichoke and the garlic. We also got the artichoke dip, which I really like because it doesn't fill you up too much like other ones are very heavy. It's actually a pretty mm -hmm. light dip. Uh, it almost tastes whipped, yeah. if you can concur with that. Um, I do. Yes. Uh, <laughs> do you concur? It, oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. We all concur. And then we had the Galileo pizza, which had the artichoke hearts and spinach and tomato. This pizza has no sauce. And so we said to the server, is there no sauce on this pizza? And she said, there is no sauce, but I'm, ha I'm happy to bring you a side of marinara, which mm -hmm. she did. And it was delicious with or without the marinara. I always get a beet salad because I love beets, number one. Number two, it makes me feel healthy for the meal that I'm about to order. The wings are a must because they're not your traditional buffalo or fried wings. They actually put them in the same wood-fired oven as they do the pizzas. Yeah. And they're in a soy sauce, garlic, sweet kind of glaze. Um, and they come with a beautiful house-made ranch. And I usually like the wings because I save the ranch for the pizza crust. The pizza, I usually get one with full garlic cloves. And they're roasted and they're delicious, but 
I will tell you, I have to be prepared for the next two days because I'm going to be sweating <laughs> out that garlic. It well, is as long as the person you're with is eating the garlic absolutely. as well, then you're in good Everybody shape. has to have a slice mm -hmm. of that pizza, but yeah. it's just a really delicious and chewy texture, crispy on the outside. Mm. The pizza never is soggy. I share your enthusiasm for it because the, I like to make pizza at home too, and I thought their pizzas were just absolutely beautiful. They had those lightly charred crust, just beautifully crisp, and we ordered the pizza with the fennel sausage. And it was, I don't know whether it was Petaluma fennel sausage. Or not, <laughs> anyway, it was just beautifully tasty, well done, nicely served, really enjoyed it. Did any of you have the jalapeno cilantro sauce? Because that, it's a very small piece of the menu and it's on the back, but it is absolutely delicious to dip your pizza in or just to add to the pizza. No. It's acidic and it's really garlicky and tangy. Um, and I think it really complements the pizza. You can go ranch one side, jalapeno <laughs> cilantro on the other. This is and called Jeanette style. So yeah, when Jeanette's you go and order Jeanette ranch. style pizza. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you have, to understand, you have to understand that I'm only just recovering from the English tendency to eat pizza with a knife and fork. Oh, so okay, now, I have to, now I have to, uh, to dip <laughs> it in. And tomatoes on your pizza. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, Jeanette, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. I would say for groups or friends in a fun, relaxed atmosphere, cold beer, hot pizza. All right, and Char? This place is fun and relaxed. It's really lively. Everybody's in there, and it's a great place to go and hang out or meet up. Okay, and David? Yeah, I thought that uh, it was kind of the opposite of what I expected because it's the noise is not that great. It's friendly. It's warm. Sitting around that fire pit outside is just delightful. All right, if you would like to try Jupiter, it's located on Shattuck Avenue at Alston Way in Berkeley. The telephone number is 510-843-8277. It's open every day for lunch and dinner. Reservations are accepted for groups of 10 or more, except on Fridays and Saturdays. And the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $20. I'm a bubble lover, period. If it sparkles, it's in my glass. One fizz that deserves fame is Franciacorta. Franciacorta is the name of a wine and a place located in northern Italy's Lombardy region. It's made with Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, known as Pinot Nero, and Pinot Blanc. These are essentially the same grape varieties used in the best sparkling wines around the globe. The fine bubbles come from being crafted in the traditional method, otherwise known as Method Champenoise in France. By aging in the bottle and resting for years on the yeast, Francia Corta gains complexity and elegance. Price-wise, these wines compare with Champagne and top California sparkling. Personally, I adore the rosé versions like this one from Italy's heralded house of Antonori and the centuries-old Pizzini. Francia Corta is a sparkling treasure to discover. Cheers. Off the beaten path, David's pick is in Sonoma County, where a pedigreed chef has settled in a quaint, funky cabin. Wood-fired cooking produces casually elegant dishes that make the stars shine in Glen Ellen. Prepare to be starstruck at Glen Ellen Star. New York City really spoils you. You have access to anything you want at any time of day or night. Glen Ellen is certainly a more slow-paced country life. At 9 o'clock, our town's done. It's over. My name is Ari Weisswasser, and uh, I own Glen Ellen Star. When I lived in, in New York City, I worked in a lot of fine dining restaurants. And on my one day off a week, I wanted something a little bit more rustic with less rules, really. I, I gravitated toward restaurants. They cooked like that. They cooked in that style. They weren't afraid to almost burn something. Restaurants that had wood ovens, really. It's another level of flavor. You almost have to discipline yourself not to be afraid of. And so we decided to anchor the middle of the restaurant with a wood oven. And it's positioned so when you drive by the restaurant, it's the first thing that you see. We like to use local wood. We have madrone and oak and some vines and things like that, and use local produce as well. Over time, we're using our garden and we're using local connections really to define our menu. We like our servers to bring their own personality into the restaurant. Our guests really gravitate toward that. They almost become friends and they, they request certain servers on certain nights. It's almost like you're looking forward to eating in a restaurant, not just because of the food, but because of who's there. And then leaving with just having a great time and not really being able to pinpoint why it was great, because there were so many great things and give them that escape. 
So David, Chef Ari has quite a pedigree, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he uh, trained under Daniel Baloud in New York. Mm -hmm. He cooked at uh, Pichulin, oh. which is one of my favorite one of my restaurants in New York. York. Absolutely. Fabulous place. And he spent, I think, at least two years uh, with Thomas Keller at the French Laundry. I Flavor. think Chef Ari wanted to strip that all his classical training sort of fussiness away, and, it, and it's about four ingredients, right? You, he's, you he's, stripped, really he's stripped mm -hmm. all the fussiness away, absolutely. Right. But he but can't he hide the, the fact that right. the technique is there. It's really well known for its vegetables, uh, all of which are cooked in the brick oven. And many of them come from his garden. Uh, many of them come from his garden. And, and of the course, garden. with their association with the Benzigers, Benzigers is the first bio. And that's his wife, Aaron Benzigers. Yes, Aaron. That's right. And of course, it's uh, the first winery in the mm -hmm. country designated as biodynamics. The Brussels sprouts are amazing. I mean, you have to really think about booking a confessional with your doctor the next morning because <laughs> they have these Brussels sprouts cooked in the oven and then with a brown sugar bacon marmalade. This dish is so decadent. The outsides are great green, but the edges are crispy and roasted. Yes. And then this bacon brown sugar marmalade yes. is so sweet and salty and smoky. I did not have the Brussels sprouts, but now I will go back and have the Brussels sprouts. I had the margarita pizza just because I think margarita is a staple yes, and sure. you can kind of judge a restaurant by their margarita pizza, but it was absolutely delicious and very crisp thin crust, traditional. We, we enjoyed the pizza margarita. It had fresh basil leaves on top. And we enjoyed the tangy freshness of the tomato sauce with the mozzarella. And I noticed that my friend and I, that we each just put our crusts on the plate. And I thought, well, okay, we didn't eat the crust, so maybe it wasn't the crust might have been a little lackluster, but you just it was need delicious. ranch dressing. We needed the ranch dressing. Yeah, yeah. 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 so you can do the Jeanette. <laughs> then you do the Jeanette. Yes. <laughs> we started with the rustic sourdough boule, uh, which was baked with spring onions and sprinkled with salt and sumac on top, just moist. Uh, and crispy on the outside. Then we also had the fresh pea soup it's served amazing. with a ricotta nudi, mm -hmm. which is poached ricotta and it tastes like a dumpling. It's kind of doughy. Mm -hmm. And that soup was bright green and fresh. And it had a little touch of mint in it, and it just tasted like spring. The <laughs> ribeye was served with roasted potatoes, uh, cooked medium rare with a glass of red wine. That was just a little bit of heaven. Well, I was just going to ask about drinks. <laughs> you are in the middle of wine country. We are in the middle of wine country, and it's uh, not a huge wine list, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's very interesting in the sense that it has wines from many different parts of the world. It has Rhone wines. Loire wines, even from Priora. Um, and there's, there's one Benziger which is kind of snuck in there. So it's uh, the wines are very carefully chosen, I think, to pair with the different foods. You can get a glass and a flask. Yes, which is a, can, which I is said, terrific. what's a flask? I was a little nervous. <laughs> and they said, well, it's just a glass and a half. half. Yeah, but it comes in a beaker. It's on little. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We cannot leave this restaurant without describing one of their signature dishes, which is the fish. It's a dorade fish. And I don't know how, what magic they pull to do this, but they slice the fish across the back, not on the belly, and they extract all the innards of the fish and the bones from the top. And then they stuff it, and the stuffings change from time to time, there are mm -hmm. sauces and so on. They pop it into the oven, that brick oven, and the skin bubbles up and it comes out and it's perfect. I love the service. That was probably my number one positive part about the experience. I got to sit in the sunroom, mm -hmm. uh, which was adjacent to the restaurant, and it feels like an overflow room. It felt like we were the only non-locals there. Mm -hmm. People really go there and love the food and really enjoy spending time with their company. Only afterwards did I get to walk through the restaurant and go, oh, this was what was going on in here. You just have um, to go back. That's absolutely. With David, preferably. Absolutely. Right. She's absolutely. already invited me to take her there. So. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what about desserts? <laughs> Uh, desserts, so they make their ice cream there. So we actually tried some of their um, hand-churned ice cream and it was the vanilla maple bourbon, which was absolutely creamy and they serve it in this really delightful little presentation jug. Flavorful and the vanilla bean was really prominent, which I really love. It's got a little hint of bourbon. It's not boozy. Mm -hmm. I, I think a kid might even eat it. Right. Um, maybe they wouldn't even notice the bourbon. <laughs> and they'd sleep great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. Just a fun, deceptively simple, delicious food. Great choice of wine. Just go there. All right, and sure. Fresh, creative California cuisine in picturesque Glen Ellen. Okay, and Jeanette. 
I would say if you're looking for farm to table and a constantly changing seasonal menu, this place is for you. All right, if you would like to try Glen Ellen Star, it's located on Arnold Drive and Warm Springs Road in Glen Ellen. The telephone number is 707-343-1384. It's open every night for dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $50. I want to thank my great guests on this week's show. Char Saxon Spot wows with good old fashioned Southern hospitality at Rusty's Southern in San Francisco. Dine in or out of the galaxy at Jeanette Cazares' relaxed beer centric location in Berkeley at Jupiter. And David Hopkins, whose culinary comet shoots over a small town in Sonoma County at Glen Ellen Star. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, and cheers che to you guys. Cheers. 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 That was good. cheers. So now it's your turn. We want to hear from you if you visited any of our Check Please restaurants. You can post a selfie on Instagram, join the conversation on Facebook, and tweet us anytime. And don't forget to visit our website. All the shows are there, along with my wine videos and notes about the wines we drink on set. You'll also find our fun new web series, Taste This, where we celebrate food and drinks around the Bay. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... IRG has in-trend surfaces, quieter marbles, and rare exotics. Over 10,000 slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin and at marblecompany.com. Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks. Working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Sutter Health CPMC, 7,000 employees, nurses, and physicians caring for their communities every day. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Total Wine & More offers more than 8,000 wines from around the world and more than 2,500 beers, including hard-to-find seasonal brews and imports. Now open in Mountain View, Pleasant Hill, and Fremont.